of the multidimensional poverty released last year by the National Bureau of Statistics, MBS, in virtually every indices of development, especially the Human Development Index, HDI, Northern Nigeria has the biggest bad numbers. Some of the poorest demography are in the north. Worst case scenario of maternal and infant mortality is in the north. Educationally disadvantaged in the north. The bulk of the over 20 million set by UNESCO to be out of school children are in the north. The widest expanse of ungoverned spaces where armed non-state actors wreak havoc at will, whimsically, with heavy human atrocities is also in the north. Massive, fertile, and arable land lying in wastes, or at least, or at best, cultivated with minimal value chain is in the north. Dead moribund industries are scattered all over the north. The north is also where the weakest value chain for resource mobilization and utilization is found. Accordingly, states across the north are today seen as the least economically viable, with the lowest internally generated revenue and heavily dependent on federal government, federal allocations. You will say whether northern Nigeria. There is a sense in the growing concern that the north of Nigeria must come to terms and square up to its current state of underdevelopment. And that is the thrust of our conversation on democracy in practice this outing. I'll be back with gentlemen who are very conversant with the situation with insight into it to engage in a frank discussion about the state of the North and how leaders across the North must take up the challenge to square up to this state of underdevelopment. I'll be right back shortly. Democracy in practice. Democracy in practice. Welcome back, Democracy in Practice on the Combined Transmission of Liberty Television and Liberty Radio. We're looking at the North straight in the face and telling the North that it is underdeveloped in the context of mainstream Nigeria. Where, how has the North come to a point where development has eluded this part of the nation for so long? This is the issue we're facing in this conversation. I'm joined in the studio by Dr. Abbas Garba Idris. He's a development and political economist. Um, let me also say the pioneer director general of um, 
the FCT Emergency uh, Management Agency, FEMA. There's something striking about his, uh, his profile. He's, uh, he's an expert, a management expert in hazards and emergencies. And that's very key to this discussion because the North has been bedeviled with all kinds of atrocities, hazards, especially in terms of driving the hazards that the leadership have foisted on, on the region. Dr. Idris, you're welcome. Thank you very much for having me. I'm also in the studio with Ambassador Ibrahim Waya. He is Executive Director of Citizens for Education and Development, and also he is the Chairman of the Conference of uh, Northern States Civil Society Network. The North is squarely within his purview, and uh, uh, we're hoping to tap from some of the insights and some of the concerns he's, he's expressed through time and why the North is in the, this state that it is at the moment. Ambassador, you're welcome. Thank you for inviting me. Hopefully, we will be joined by uh, Honorable Balarabe, um, who is a member of the House of Representatives in the Ninth Assembly. Uh, we're hoping he will join us in the, co the course of this conversation. Gentlemen, you're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Let me start by self-critique. The prologue you heard, is it a correct reading of the profile of the North? Maybe, Doctor, you take it from there. Well, uh, thank you very much. Um, <laughs> Um, if you apply the, the risk management aspect of uh, life, you find out that, uh, yes, it is correct, but it's not a bad thing. As far as I'm concerned, population is a very good thing. Hmm. And uh, all we need to do is to, to see how we can use our population hmm. to grow. Uh, the challenge is that all the indices you have indicated, yes, they are right. If you match, when you take the population of the north, compare it with the population of other places, and by the time you are applying those uh, evils mm. in court, <laughs> you will find out that the po it will definitely be higher in where the population is higher. So uh, therefore, when it, when it comes to good aspect also, you find out that the, the North will be having the highest number of it too. So all we need to do is to use our own population and make very good use of it and then uh, uh, make it in such a way that it is going to benefit the humanity, it's going to benefit the North. And then in terms of education, when you are applying, when you are, in, I mean, trying to do a budget, and then you should know that you are having a very larger population to cope with. So therefore your budget should be span or very, very far also big in such a way that it will cover the population. But if you take your own budget, compare it to a smaller state or smaller region, then you are cheating yourself and you are cheating the nation. And economically, if you look at the productivity also, mm. you mm. find out that the GDP coming from the north is much higher. Mm. If we are going to take that, what we don't extract that, we only extract the negativities and now look at it from that perspective and say, no, this one is coming from the north and because it is negative. Why don't we take the, 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 the GDP if GDP, the definition of GDP is true, uh, is number of productions in the, uh, per, per head and per area and per location, then if you look at the, the number of farmers who produce things, you find out that nobody is going to match the north. If you look at, and, and everybody knows that the cows that move, for instance, from Yobe, from Adamawa to the uh, eastern market, a very large number, in a very large number, but we have never taken note of that. Now, Doctor, yeah. why is it that the North is not telling its story in relative terms? I mean, looking at development on a pedestal, uh, the, very, the uh, uh, regional analysis of, of every time there's a conversation on development in Nigeria, the North is rated at the bottom of and the ladder. You see that there is no response. And, and There's no response. Is, and I think that is the, the, uh, the responsibility of the civil society now that we have. There should be our mouthpiece because since we are keeping quiet, the, the civil society should take it up and, and make sure that uh, they really project 
the image of the North. Um, so many things good are happening in the North, but you can't hear it. So many bad things are happening. Okay, look at the killings in, 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 in Zamfara and other parts of this North. Who is talking about it? Nobody is talking about it. Even the government in that sector is not talking about it. But you find out that one person is killed somewhere. You see they make a lot of noise, generating a lot of heat, as if there were no killing elsewhere. But our own would just go, and then you find out that people were quiet. They will go to their markets. They will go to their all other things. They don't care about it. Nobody knows about it. No. And we need to really get... A, 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 an, an NGO or at least a group that will champion that cause and be the mouthpiece of the North. What, I mean, would you buy the idea that the North has been docile when it comes to telling its own story, giving the right narrative about the actual state of the North in relative terms, I mean, compared to the, to the other parts of the country? Well, I think um, I think I will have a different um, of feeling from mm. what the doctor said because um, the negativity that we're talking about that is always been projected as far as the north is concerned. Incidentally, the civil society is also part of projecting the ne negativity well, that, uh, that is the doctor is saying. Yes. That is, uh, but definitely maybe I will have to explain that, mm. uh, the reason for that. Mm. Because uh, although statistics is not, um, uh, it's not really actually a reliable one that probably could be quoted from a reliable source, but more than 60% of the money that comes uh, to the north, particularly the money that comes from federal government, goes into corruption. Yes, so it's a phone by the political leaders, mm. by the political actors. So this is too dangerous, at least looking at the region itself. Consider the north are just only its own country, not comparing it with any other part of the country. If you look at the whole indices, indices of the development, why we cannot excuse ourselves and we cannot give any excuse to the North or project the North in any uh, positive light considering the negativity and the rest of that is considering, I mean, we're looking at every single resources that a country requires to develop. We have it in the North. We have both human and material resources. We have everything in abundance. Everything. Just like what he said. Population is one of the critical assets now in mm. the whole world. Mm. But only that if you transform it into a productive uh, asset, but not actually a productive asset. The one we have in the north is not actually productive. Yeah, some people and have said the pop population in the north is actually a liability. It's not that one is actually that what I'm saying. Is that, will, will you well, buy that? I, I, okay. Of course, myself, I will buy that. I will buy into that um, uh, that uh, opinion because if you look at the number of the people that are jobless, unemployed, and it's not about just only somebody that has gone to school now. It's not about certificate. It's not just only a certificate oriented society we're talking about, which we have already been living on. That look this skills that somebody required to transform himself, transform the society, transform the community who is living and make a positive impact on the lives of himself and others. That is exactly what we're talking about because the whole world is shaped him from a certificate to recognize the society or community to a skill to recognize society. Why is only a skill that determines who you are? And if you confirm that, you can see the south, southern part of the country, they go into that already. Acquiring skills, you will see somebody just only with secondary school certificate, but he has gone and acquired so many number of training, so many number of skills, and he can even give that kind of training to a graduate or to somebody who is even uh, with qualification more than even graduate. So that is actually why they are a bit ahead of us, for particularly taking advantage of the digitalization that is actually now has become a, a global phenomenon. Mm. You take advantage of that mm. and you use it to transfer everything you want to transfer. But in the north, look at our own population. Just to only a little scenario that I would give. The 2020 report that was released as far as the IGR is concerned, mm. Intelligent General mm. Revenue, mm. was placing Kaduna State above Kano State. Ironically, how do you define that? How do you convince yourself that Kaduna would generate revenue more than that of the Kano? Mm. Ideally, we can look at just totally... Uh, do you doubt that of course, figure? We, yes, why you would doubt that figure? It's not that it is not true. But the issue is because that money that is being generated in Kano is been going somewhere or inside phone. 
that is actually the, the whole truth. Nothing more than that. And that is the Kaduna probably they try to protect it and they try not to allow anybody to take it. We know very well the last administration they try to digitalize everything. That is Erufai uh, introducing what he called mm -hmm. that everything is, is done digitally and the old block old leakages that somebody could take advantage of the siphon public money. But in Kano there was nothing like that because there was things like a consultancy in the uh, revenue generation of the state and the rest of that. So if a reasonable percentage of the money that is actually being generated goes into the pocket of a few individuals as well as the consultant. So you can see the danger. So if the resources is not effectively used or effectively put into use, then how do you blame other citizens or other part of the country shifting blame on you? It is within us the problem. It's within us. Not actually the issue of whether we project the north in the good light or in the bad light, but the issue is about even our political political orientation is very different from the way how it is. And look at just a simple example that we give you now. Look at the way now the agriculture. We in the north, we always been so boosting of having everything, taking everything to the south, animals, uh, farm produce and the rest of that, uh, selling it to the southern part of the country. But they have now decided to come up with a scheme now on how they can be independent of that so that they will never, they will no longer be dependent on it. They have already devised all, all all, 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 all strategy now of creating ranches within the southern part of the country. <laughs> also, also the issue of the poultry farming, the issue of fish yeah, the, farming. Mass, there have are mass, massive poultry farms in the south. What they have is they have a strategy plan that in the next five years, ten years, they will never be, they will not be needing the north. Now that is where the problem is. Yeah. Should we be talking about north and south in Nigeria in the context of uh, in the context of developing a nation, we'll come to that conversation. No, and we will come. Let, let, let's take a, a short break um, and come back to this conversation. I think it's heating up. We need to be very, fact, uh, be very frank about the situation in North. If the North has gone beyond the point where it is in denial about its status, about its profile, uh, who is telling its story, whether it's telling it the right way, uh, or is allowing others to tell its own story, or the story is being bandied around about the North. Are they the authentic reflection of the state of the North? We'll return to take on this conversation. Democracy in practice. Democracy in practice.
basic education in health. He was also very active in the army, anti-drug appropriation. Honorable, you're most welcome. Thank you very much for inviting me. We are discussing the North and squaring up to the challenges of the North. Um, the trend of the discussion as we started uh, was such, such that uh, the, the, the story of the North, the narrative about the North is perhaps over exaggerated and that uh, the North is also not telling stories correctly. But then there is a counter to the extent that uh, the North has been bedeviled by um, uh, on the utilization of its strength, of its population, of its resources, and is bedeviled by corruption. What is your take about the current state of the North? Glaringly, it is underdeveloped. Well, thank you very much. Uh, definitely, the North and the country as a whole at Nigeria uh, is not where we had wanted it to be. And of course, the final file was uh, 60 years ago. Uh, uh, this uh, cannot be taken you know, out of context. Uh, in exclusivity to the rest of the country. Uh, I believe where the North found itself is not much different from also where the southern part of the country uh, have found themselves. Uh, as a young uh, graduate, I served in the southeast. I have also moved around the country in southwest and south, uh, south, uh, south, south. I was amazed to find those regions of the country being bedeviled with the same development mm. challenges mm. as no other part of the country, uh, the, uh, being those around 30 years ago or so. Uh, and haven't the I stories mean, been changed been between then and now? Okay, okay. Issues of bad roads, issues of non uh, or absence of portable water, dilapidated infrastructure, in education, in health, and everything. But for me, whether for the north or for the south, one of the fundamental problems that we have is the Nigerian constitution mm -hmm. itself. Honestly, I think this presidential system constitution that we borrowed from the U.S. is one of the major things about, you know, all the major blocks to the development of this country. We borrowed in a constitution that we barely, you know, have been able to understand how it works. Right from the first, uh, the, 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 the third Coming from a man who was driving and the process of <laughs> implementing that constitution as a member of the House of Assembly, this is a stinging indictment. Well, no, we, we tried our best, you know. I, I presented multiple bills, you know, directed the constitutional amendment. I am a staunch and unrepentant believer in restructuring. The way this country is structured with the current constitution, honestly, will not give us, you know, the desired development that we need in this country. I believe, you know, in stronger states and, of course, stronger local governments. Uh, a balanced center, I don't want to call it a weak center, but a balanced center. I also believe to some extent in, 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 in management uh, of, of resources are uh, collective. As far as I'm concerned, the federal government should deal more with issues of macroeconomics, mm -hmm. foreign policy, mm -hmm. and defense. For, some, for someone like me, the uh, federal government should have little or no business in issues of agriculture, health, and education. And to some extent, even uh, some level of uh, internal security. Because all crimes are local. Mm -hmm. and the solutions mm -hmm. are local. Mm -hmm. I fought hard uh, with other coal mines uh, uh, for the introduction of state policing. Of course, you know, it passed, uh, it didn't pass uh, uh, the, the, the Ninth uh, Assembly, but they are going to put it, uh, and this is where we are. This is still where we are as far as you know, security is concerned. Uh, we have not been able to make much progress. You cannot have uh, a, a crime and, and criminals and their cohorts being local. Their organizations are local, they know the train, and then you begin to post people from other parts of the Federation. To, 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 to come and manage that area. Now, coming back to that constitution, mm. the American constitution was essentially and fundamentally an immigrant-based constitution. It was a constitution that was brought, you know, for the newly uh, developed, uh, constituted country then from majorly immigrants from Europe. So, without much concern about the rights of the indigenous people, most in the U.S. now, they're almost all wiped out. Mm. So, you, 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 you transfer such kind of constitution to a country like Nigeria that is multicultural, multi-religious, and then you concentrate everything to the center. And look at where we are today. Nigeria, I think, is one of the only few countries in the world where governors, by way of their commissions of finance, come to the center every month, share money, go back to their states, monies that they have little or no contribution to, 
I will have accountability, spend all the money and come back to center and take, take their papers and break, uh, by way of fact. Sorry, Honorable, let, let, me, let, me, let me get a take of uh, Dr. Abbas Idris on this. You are um, um, a political and development economist. The way the northern leadership, uh, the northern bureaucracy, has been running to Abuja to collect money and with a lot of questions hanging on that money not being properly utilized, being co corruptly diverted to personal uh, uh, assets. Mm -hmm. Is it that the North cannot checkmate itself when it comes to, cannot hold itself back and generate its own resources, given also that at the beginning of this conversation, you said the North is enormously endowed. Good. Population yep. and human and material resources. Why does the North, always, the entire 19 northern states, yeah. are heavily reliant, with a few exceptions, on Abuja? Yeah, one of the major take uh, home from the Honorable's uh, intervention. Uh, intervention was that uh, he said we should apply the macro and microeconomics aspect of it. If you look at it, going back to my initial discussion, um, uh, issue of saying the, the North is really endowed. If you take the population, I, I don't believe that the population uh, to be taken with a negative uh, look of it. Mm -hmm. uh, the only thing is that uh, our leadership lacks strategies. Mm -hmm. We lack strategies. If you are talking of uh, why is Kaduna generating revenue more than Kano because of the population, because of the less size of the market, because of the economic activities in Kano more than Kaduna, probably they had a leadership that was very transparent and he also very money exactly being, being corruptly. Uh, no, no, I'm coming to that. I'm also coming to <laughs> that. So if whatever that is. Uh, uh, the statistics captured mm -hmm. is what the nation and the whole world is going to use. Mm -hmm. uh, say, and that is why we are hearing that in 2022, the, the, the only states that met up the, its own target or were able to generate revenue were Kaduna and some other few states. And Kano was not mentioned. And because he is saying now, because of the probably they have generated much more than what Kaduna has generated, been, but it has been for. good. So that is another aspect that will have to be with the leadership and it takes time it takes a leadership to be able to really tame and be able to generate and also be able to account for those revenues generated and that is why i'm always in, i'm also always insisting that our population if we are going to use it the way it's supposed to be we shouldn't be lagging behind in all aspects and that is why i also say if you have a larger population you have a very larger budget and you shouldn't wait until when a little is given to you from the uh, feder federation account use whatever is given to you as uh, from the federation account as an alternative means of income but make sure that you use your population use whatever economic indices you have everything untapped that a leadership can put and then get it ready and then be able to satisfy it satisfy your own uh, uh, members of, of the state how many governors do they have such targets that they have they come with the impression that they are going to generate revenue and make that revenue to be developed enough even education up to now in the north some state are sitting on on, on the floor primary school. Mm. And uh, when the, the Honorable was saying that we should leave education to the state, I just feel at this level, the primary school, they could not be able to even shoulder the primary school, mm. the responsibilities. It's their own responsibility. But even at the FCT level, you find out that uh, only last month that the teachers in the primary school uh, uh, turned back, I mean, returned to classes. They, were, they had been on, 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 on strike for a very long period of time. So why should we allow such to be happening and and then the leadership is not really concerned and then we now blame the, uh, the center or we blame other people that were if you look the activity look at the, the activities of the governors presently those that came on board who has a very presentable program and 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 no, we'll come, and, we'll come and, to that because this, we need because to look at the way forward absolutely um, the, the time is going yes. time that, that is going this is no time months and north, north, the north I mean, cannot continue to play catch up with the with the rest of, 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 of nigeria uh, ambassador let's look at the exposure of north to resources mm -hmm. 
mainstream resources in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. Let's look at exposure of the North to, to political control mm -hmm. and look at and relate that to the level of development in the North. The North has, part of the argument in the, in the Nigerian question has been that the North has been overly exposed to power and therefore overly exposed to central resources. But has that reflected in the life of the man on the street in the North? And actually, that, one, that, has, that has what has been the major problem of the North. Thinking that they, they always focus their own attention on the politics, that political leadership taking the center, and they feel that that is the whole thing. But it's not about that because we are operating federalism. When you take the center, uh, definitely all eyes will be on you and you have responsibility to respond and accommodate all other parts of the country. And that is why most of the times in doing that and trying to respond to that kind of sentiment, then those from the north at the mantle of the leadership then tend to forget even the north and go to satisfy the sentiment of the other part of the country. Just simply because they will have to accommodate that. Look at what we're seeing. Every major appointment during Buhari administration, almost two major appointment came from the north. But what did they contribute? Nothing. Nothing, but really. It has not added, it has not added any value to the North. But now we are seeing another trend again, which is already because the latter administration has already successfully uh, established a precedence. It has already institutionalized the precedence where, wherever you come from, then you make sure that those people from you, or from your region, or those around you should take the major appointment. So this is exactly what we say. So, issue of the resources or having control on the center and vis-a-vis -vis the control over the resources, it has nothing honestly speaking to make any significant or any positive impact. Because had it been that the last administration was wise enough to do that, the last administration not just only been uh, probably been on fire to other parts of the country, but every region of the country, especially with the uh, growing agitations for resource control all over the country. Mm -hmm. Every part of the country should really be allowed to develop itself by having the needed support from the federal government. Here in the north, we have a lot of resources. Although they, they have started already the issue of the oil exploration and the rest of that, they already massively invested on that, but nobody can tell you now where it is now. But we're hoping that had even that the last administration was serious, was serious enough, projects like the Mambila project, the Jakuta, Steel company project. These are critical projects in the north that, if you really help, it's not going to only be uh, benefited by those from the north, but the whole country. Because the Mambila project is going to provide energy. When the energy is provided, job will be provided. Then, if our industries are revived, start working, a lot of people will be working. Because I know what I used to know uh, when I was a child. I, I mean, when I was young, I know very well that most of the people that I used to work in the industry that I were in Kano, Kaduna, and they were all dominated by other people from the other part of the country because our people were not even exposed to working in the fabric sector. Now, at the beginning of this conversation, we talked about the, the, the massive spread of dead moribund industries in the north. Mm. These are, if you talk about the, the quantum of abandoned projects in the north, mm. um, economically viable projects in the north, That's right. a lot of them are in the north. Yes. And through time, we seem to be just looking at them as if nothing has gone wrong. Mm -hmm. Unemployment is so high in the north now. Uh, you were in the anti-drug... Mm -hmm. uh, um, the drug abuse. Yeah, uh, dr dr drug abuse uh, uh, um, uh, initiative of the National... Yes, That's right. of, the, of the House of Representatives. Mm -hmm. We've been told about young people across the north sniffing all manners of drugs. Of course. The industries have remained dead. Unemployment is at horrendous levels of now. Course, of course. But we seem to think that nothing has gone wrong in the North. At the moment, we have about looking at um, going forward, because it's not about lamentation over spilled milk for, for the past couple of years. What is happening now? Are we seeing new thinking? Are we seeing new strategies? New, new, there are a lot of new people at the helm of affairs in the various states of, uh, across the north. Are we seeing radical, radically different thinking coming out in this past couple of months that they've been there? 
No, actually, this is one of the, the conversations we have already started now at the constituency of the civil society in the north. I lead the, the conference, uh, which comprises of all the 19 northern states, uh, networks. In fact, I was just coming from there now. We are having a meeting at the NAV conference center. They are all there, my members. So this is the conversation that we are now trying to take off, that the north is a NAV for the conversation is enough for the talking, mm -hmm. especially mm -hmm. on social media. Mm -hmm. Every social media platform that belongs to all the men that you can think, men and women in the north, they do nothing except talking. From 6 a.m., they will start talking until 12 p.m. And nothing talking, changes. Nothing. We will spend 10 hours talking, but you, have ne you will never see three, four, five people coming together in once one of the one one of the one of them in in one of them uh, the house of one of them at least to discuss one single problem how do we tackle this how do we make sure that we change the narrative how do we take up this as a project you will never see this kind of thing in the north if you see somebody in the north getting agitated making a lot of noise all over the media is because he has been completely dislodged from the system so he's political now, patronage. That's right. So he is having polit no political patronage, and he's now trying to get a chance to clinch on another platform so that he Hon can be, be recognized. Honorable, let's be very pointed about this. We have 19 states of the north. A few of the governors were re-elected. I mean, some of the governors were re-elected. Yes. There are new governors. Have we seen in any of the 19 states thus far any sign of anything changing? We can. I mean, I think it's. At the high time, we started mentioning those that are doing well and those that are not of doing course, well. Of course, the 19 states of Nigeria, from Benue to Sokoto, from Niger to Maiduguri to, to Borno, is there, and the states in the middle, is there any state that is showing any sign of any radical departure? Well, for me, I was. And uh, Doctor, I think this is your purview as a development economist. <laughs> <laughs> well, for me, I would say it will be quite early to begin a system. Uh, most of all, all the governors are still battling in court about the legitimacy of their mandates. So uh, there is that distraction. And suddenly, everyone knew, you know, this, this, this current uh, 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 government and, uh, at all levels uh, came in uh, during their economic consequences. So I think. Uh, uh, of course, there are definitely institutions. Are we not creating grounds for convenient excuses now? That's no, it's, 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 it's just five months now, going to six months. By I think uh, even they the, told uh, us they were coming in ready to do the job. Really. <laughs> Most of them and one hundred thousand, one hundred years or so. Let, let, me this, let me use this word that has become a cliche. Mm. We're coming and we're hitting the ground yeah, running. Okay. On what parameters? <laughs> on what indices? Whether, whether you're going to be... So they didn't understand what they were so coming for? Probably they have their uh, set codes and their parameters, which most of them have not told us. Yes. Or for us who are, for example, going to hold them accountable, mm. whether by social society organizations, NGOs, and even government uh, uh, oversight uh, uh, institutions, uh, what are the parameters when this is set to measure their performances? I still believe, in my own opinion, mm. that it's quite early, and uh, probably by the first quarter of next year, uh, we should be able to reel out those statistics from when they came in uh, on, on all the human development indices to where they are at that point, and to really uh, be the right time to check make them on that. Okay, well, honorable, at, 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 at the level of the, po the policy pronouncement, we know that, I mean, in terms of act actuality, in term terms of concrete action on ground, we may carry a while, but the definition, the description of the policies that have churned out each and every one of them, the 19 of them, is this showing any sign that there is a departure from the moribund past? Well, for now it has not shown, but I, 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 I want to still, you know, uh, uh, maintain my earlier statement. You want to still make excuses for them? them? No, I'm not making excuses for them. <laughs> Most of them, all of them, you know, make promises to make uh, a significant improvement in security, in education, in health, and in poverty alleviation. Those those are the core denominators for all of them. Mm. And I, I think uh, mm. uh, the, 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 their performances and, and set indices are, are being followed. And at the appropriate time, uh, organizations that are independent, uh, including ours, will make our pronouncements mm. on that. Mm. But five months, and they are still battling their cases in court. Well, who knows? Uh, well, some of them will still be there. So well, honorable, I think you just you are more minded to call in, cutting them a slack. <laughs> no, honestly not. Honestly, I am one of those that always say any governor, any governor that has not been able to perform should be called and be told the truth. Mm. They must be held to account. Mm. You know, mm. even even in the National Assembly, uh, even though of course government uh, 
uh, state governments are independent of the states by their constitution. Mm -hmm. There were areas when we had to intervene by sponsoring motions to call governors to orders who, I mean, to order while well, we, we saw them doing things uh, wrongly uh, or uh, uh, opposed to that. People, uh, either particularly during COVID 19 mm -hmm. and uh, during issues of economic hardship and, and insecurity and the rest. So, honestly, I'm not uh, cutting them any slack. But I want to quickly mm -hmm. respond to, to Doctor when he talked about uh, education, uh, mm -hmm. that we should leave it to states. Uh, what we are talking about basic education. Basic education in the purview of the states is in the concurrent list mm. of the constitution. Mm. The federal government cannot come and build primary schools or mm. basic uh, or junior school schools for any state. It's in the purview of the states. But of course, the federal government uh, brought in Newbeck, which has been uh, trying their best and doing a wonderful job uh, recently uh, over there to improve basic education. But the funding has to be increased. And for us in the National Assembly, what, during my time there, with a lot of other uh, like-minded uh, um, honorable members, both in the Senate and the House of Reps, and also people in the, in the, in the uh, civil, society. civil society, we have been able to make a landmark achievement by democratizing education through the bill of the Almagri and mm. 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 I have, I have one, I'm one of those that argue that you know, the conventional Western style education is not only the form of education That's that right. we should give our children. Right. You know, education is universal and it doesn't have to be in the four, four wall classroom, four corners of a classroom. And that's the essence of the Almagri and out of school uh, commission bill. And in that spirit, today, you know, the National Assembly, this 10th Assembly, under the leadership of Mr. Speaker Tajun Abbas, they even created a standing committee on alternate education, which means in Nigeria... Alternate education. Alternate education. Yes, alternate. So it's essentially democratizing education, providing education in the context, in a contextual manner, in a flexible manner, on, and, and how our people from all parts of the country want it. Yes. The federal government or state governments cannot build all the classrooms. One of the arguments we've had that time was even if all the parents in the north say they are going to push their children to, to school, they cannot absorb them. The teachers are That's not there. Right. The, the, the learning infrastructure is not there. So wherever you are and being educated and you have your skill, particularly with emphasis on skills, mm. add numeracy and literacy and you'll be certificated. A lot of them are not even interested in government help. So the real essence of the Almagri and Auto School Education Commission Act now is about democratic education because I'm one of those I've always believed the current system of education that has been run by the Federation of Nigeria for the past 60 years is dictatorial. Who says everybody must go to a full classroom before before you 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 you, 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 are, you are educated? And for a lot of people, people have said it's actually in, faulty. In, 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 in Nigeria, if you don't speak English, you are illiterate. But if mm. you speak French or Chinese, mm. you, you 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 are educated. <laughs> uh, when, and then our own education is whole polo. But, uh, it's not functional, mm. it's not industry based, mm. it's not resource based. Mm. But that's one of the reasons we came up with that commission. For me, there is no reason why, for example, a child in Kogi State, in basic education, primary school, and even secondary school and universities, there's nothing that's been taught about cement industry or cement uh, mm. industrial education mm. or issues that have to be with, uh, with, with, their, with their raw materials there. Or a child in Sokoto, AKO or KB, they have massive dams, Goronyo Dam, mm. and, and mm. also Bakalori Dam okay. uh, in, in, in Zamfara. They are taught nothing about rice food production and its value chain. Or livestock production, so could have been the second largest livestock population in the country. Mm. Or in Nasara here, where they have salt, they have uh, mm. uh, columbine, they have mm. not, no studies concerning that. Or even fact in my Sokoto state, that in our curriculum, there is no anything in the curriculum to teach students about you know, the contributions of the great Sokoto Caliphate and its leaders, and she was one of you, you know, in the development of, of Africa. So the same thing, you know. So honestly, that's what that that that, that commission is all about. We are going to be, be giving education, basic education, in a contextual manner. There's industry based. There's also resource based. Mm. In Kano, students should be taught about, you know, all the agricultural and livestock industries in that area and many other. So that once you come out, you have a skill set. So they'll be given skill certificates. I like that. I like that. Yeah, I like that. that. <laughs> now, it will appear, therefore, that uh, the the present uh, crop of leadership. I mean, even I mean, looking at from uh, from the point of view of the educational sector, mm. but we're looking more um, broadly now. The present set of leadership across the north do not have a, have an excuse not to think strategically. Yeah. I think uh, that is exactly, I think maybe Honorable misunderstood me. I was saying that 
currently the basic education is under the state and they could not be able to manage it well and i cited the example that even fct just returned back to classes after a long period of teacher strike and then in some state they are still taking lessons from okay. on the floor okay. so it is to show that there is no leadership and then there is no responsible let me say use responsible leadership because if there are when when we are talking about how prepared the leaders are it is not issue of say five months or they are in the court whatever you you buy to to work for the people and from your action plans mm -hmm. we should be able to judge you from day one you assume duty as the chief executive of a state whether you are going to start implementing your action plan with court case or without court 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 cases there are some state governors at present that they go to court in fact their case was even lingering as at yesterday they were still voting money for the states and they are they are implementing some projects for the state as long as you are there as the executive governor you are responsible for the entire state development and until the day you are removed out from the court and we will start counting from the day you assume you took your oath as the executive governor then you start implementing your own programs and then those programs are supposed to be people oriented programs and we are aware we are talking about presidential system of government whereby the state has its own independence and then the federal government also has its own so if you are aware of the nigerian constitution you don't have to wait for the federal government for any program come up with your own program that will tell that is tailored towards the development of your own people look we can go into native language and teach our children to learn the skill that you are talking about we don't have to we don't have to wait for the federal government because they are talking in English, the, the state assemblies, some of them are talking, speaking Hausa yes, to pass yes, their bills, yes. and but nobody has criticized them. Course. So, why should I, as a governor of a state, that I feel if I go into my own dialect, my, uh, my people will understand and get the skills that will be useful for them and for Nigeria? And then I will be uh, concerned about people calling me names i will not so what we need to do is to strategically move into action the resources we have the little resources we have use it for the development of the north and i said it if we are going to use our own population definitely we are going to surpass any other region in terms of anything when you are talking of negativity is because there is no strategic thinking there's no strategic plan there's no strategic aspirations that what will the north or what my state going to be what do i aspire to be uh, in the next four years the state should should show in fact when you take one indices the healthcare, you find out that all the state are lagging behind you go to any hospital you hardly see you can see that there are some states that were complaining they they mentioned i saw the press conference mm -hmm. that they were having a lesser number of the the doctors that were serving at that time and even retired doctors at that particular time so th that they could not be able to that one doctor is seen over 600 people which is not supposed to be the standard. So it's the same thing with teachers. We are liking teachers. What concerted effort have we made as a state to really train our teachers and take them? The National Teachers Institute is in the north. The Arabic and uh, Islamic teachers, uh, 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 MBIS, is in the north. What do we need again? The, the nomadic education is in the north. The other one that, you are, uh, that is coming up, the commission, commission. I'm, I'm sure it's going to be in the north. And then what have we as governors, have we really tapped on those resources? There are still some states, there, there is a state that could not go for WAEG for three years, consecutive years. They couldn't write WAEG because they could not be able to pay for their pupils, their let's, students. Let's, let's sample some of the states. Let's look at what is happening in Borno State, for instance. Yeah. Let's look at Katsina State and look at Niger State. Um, Borno State seems to be the poster state in the country, mm -hmm. I mean in the north. It's, uh, it's done a lot of, um, in terms of its uh, public outing about what it's doing, That's it's right. attracted a lot of attention. Mm -hmm. um, we're seeing some traces of that uh, in Katsina. Let's take Niger, who has been, a lot of people have called him into the public square now for demanding 30 percent for um, um, biocarbon mm. uh, within 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 Niger State okay. uh, for is saying that it's going to shut down um, 
the the power plant in Niger okay. State unless there's a compensation mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. is that the way to go there are some of them that are like poster states in this in the, in the, in the country mm -hmm. and then there are those who are hyperventilating still talking about resources coming from the that from the center a, that is a mm -hmm. that is actually one of the very defective understanding of the whole thing we yes, have in the, in the whole mm -hmm. thing honestly speaking i yes. i really cannot understand the way how our leaders think they don't want to go for critical thinking they do not want to go back. And so people that go all the time around them, they are just only people who are just only psychophon hypocrites who tell them all the time what they want to hear. And we have now started seeing another new trend in the country, more dangerous than anything, that the government is going to be run now on commission. Somebody has commissioned you as a governor, then he expects you at the end of the year, a month that this is the percentage of the money yes. you're going to be. What kind of yes. dangerous trend? Running you? government on commission. Oh, we have seen a lot of that. We've seen, seen that. We've seen that, and everybody is quiet about that. The presidency is virtually and practically and systematically indulging that. That this is a, yes. And some some governors were even coming on public media saying that yes, they are happy with the whole resolution and the way how the resolution. Went. What kind of thing? Compromising with the family resources for God's sake on your behalf? Who are you? Okay, Who are you to decide how the public resource is going to be utilized? For God's sake, this is a resource that belongs to people. And without consultation, without consulting them, I you just agree that and somebody was, I was arguing with somebody, somebody was telling me that agreement is agreement. <laughs> so, so, so whatever agreement, whether it is evil, whether it is good, it yeah. is agreement. Yes, somebody could be in an agreement and probably what they call duress, that you're under duress and you couldn't do anything because at that time you're so desperate to get that. Yes, you have got it in there. You, you call for review. There's room for review of contract terms. Hmm. Contractual terms. Then, yeah, call somebody. Look, look, I have now gotten what I want, but honestly speaking, I, can run, I cannot run this. So the problem, especially with the governors that we have gotten, uh, particularly those from the north, I really blame those from the north more than any other person because there's no any state in the north that is not endowed with so many number of resources. Hmm. And you can independently create a partnership with other parts of the country. You don't exactly. need to go exactly. to pay Exactly. You don't need exactly. many states in the north stand this advantage to create partnership and collaboration look with at many other countries. Okay, let's look at um, some initial partnerships, seeming partnership in the past. For instance, there was a Northern Nigeria Development uh, um, NNDC. 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 Mm -hmm. What has happened of it? I mean, what has become of it? Is that the, the, the most vibrant bank in the north, now oh, Unity no, no, no. Bank, mm -hmm. is like playing cards the whole the of the north. The north. Practically, the north. Bank of the North. Things will not work because of the current framework of our constitution. Honestly, mm -hmm. I really want to bring to the fore and to the consciousness of all Nigerians, not particularly in the north, mm -hmm. that the greatest problems that this country has been facing, honestly, is that federal system of. I know you are a very strong advocate of. See, uh, uh, in, the, in, the, in that same constitution, there are almost 68 items on the exclusive. On the, the exclusive, I know. I know. Mm. 68. The federal government controls. Almost all the yes, resources. No, I don't know. So that. much building power. Mm -hmm. The finances, the monetary policies, mm -hmm. the borders, and everything. Mm -hmm. Even, uh, 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 except for recently, electricity, mm -hmm. dams, waterways, mm -hmm. you know, agricultural production, its means and money is controlled by the federal government. So even yeah. if you are a governor, what can you, you do? Remember, this country, you know, we. We, we, we are really talking about resource control, right? Mm -hmm. That is it, honestly. That is it. Because if uh, the, the states have been made lazy over there by coming to Abuja every month to collect money, and then there's no accountability. They chose to remain yeah, lazy. Yeah. But they, but when, they when, when, when but the new production mm -hmm. and productivity but the one that used to be by, like by, that, by honorable. Processes and legislations of the federal government, mm -hmm. if you really want to even to even to partner with 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 with, with, with uh, investors anywhere in the, in, in the world, you must seek endorsement. No, I know, I know that. I know. But only in federations where you know that a unit has the capacity and by legislation and the policy to bring in investments directly into, in, in, into their zone or into their section of the country. That's what the UAE does. Mm. That's our yeah. Yeah. And for the north now, yeah, the state has seek clearance from the, you know, from the, the central. Lines, and particularly, of course, with uh, uh, Mali Ibrahim Way and many others, there are 10 areas that northern governors and all the people of the north mm. must look into and have a strategic Ten policy. areas. Yeah, a strategic policy you know, of development. Spanning, for example, a decade or more. If we get these areas right, 
And they are not new. We are, we are not reinventing the wheel. There are four of them that are constant. Those ones we must constantly do something about them, and that is security, agriculture, and livestock production. You want so that we can devolve. Yes, these ones are constant. They must always be there. They are overarching. Now the other ones, number one is Almagiri. The Almagiri phenomenon, with mm. all its you know uh, influence or impact on security, on education, on health, on economy, for and there are many other things, and poverty. And the northern Nigeria and northern governors must rise up to the challenge and quickly also establish their state commissions for this Almagiri out of school yeah. uh, children commission. Sure. You know, by, uh, established by the federal government. We brought this into the federal government because the states have failed in doing Okay. Sorry, um, no, um, um, Honourable, I, I know you're going to be mm. just now not cutting this, you continue with this. Mm. But I've also had argument that uh, the, what, the proponents of the commission were just looking job, were looking for job for the poor. That's I've had that. Probably in I've had that. program we will have, we have, we will have enough time to discuss that. That's, that's, that's we'll, 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 we'll come for that, actually, another time. Yes, yes. we are very much interested in that. Uh, yes. and, um, I just want to tell people uh, we'll that, monitor that we are talking about the reform of Almagiri. Yes. We are talking, we are looking at the fundamental, all the primary, all the classical Almagiri that have you know, the, 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 the major principle of education economics. Discipleship. Of it. We are not talking about the hungry looking, disease reading, mm. you know, and then we are the tattered clothes wearing child that roams the street, which is not, it's his, it's his own interest as a child, as a minor, and which has not been the primary and classical imaginary system mm. that we that was be careful talking about our leaders mm. over a thousand years ago. Mm. Mm. I'm talking about the imaginary in the developmental sense of the world. Mm. We are talking about the economics and the educational value of that system of education. I'd love to see this, na this narrative being pushed properly. No, no, it will, we will really discuss that, we will discuss that in ex uh, extensively at the appropriate time. Now, thank, thank God we are making headway. Uh, he, is, he has been and still is part and parcel of the civil society communities that supported that bill throughout from the conceptualization to all the runs in the National Assembly. I want to publicly and on this platform <laughs> thank you for what you have done. Thank you. Secondly, <laughs> what the North should also do <laughs> is we must be able to develop our own power, base power. The Mambila Plateau, I mean, I'd say Mambila, Mambila Hydro Power must come on board. That is electricity for industrialization. That's Without electricity, honestly, the North cannot go anywhere. That's and none of the times we wonder what is, why still, is Mambila, what is the jinx with if, Mambila? If, if the entire governors have come to really pressure the federal government to get it done or take the bull by the horn to, to get the investors to really run all that, that, it would have happened. Take Mambila, take Ajokuta. Now, that's the third one that's going to, going to steal, steal to industrialization. We are still, we are still, we can never develop as a country. Mm -hmm. The North also, we have billions of metric tons of iron ore in 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 in, in, in Jakarta sitting there. So still, to industrialization, there are another key strategic area for the North. The third one is internal waterways, mm -hmm. port, and a lot of other ports like that must mm -hmm. work for the North. Mm -hmm. The river Niger must be great, and we must have unity of purpose to get these things done. Then the number fifth one is non-interest banking. The North must work out on non-necessary banking for financial inclusion. That's right. Our people will never take block bank loans that have a rebar. But then they get a rebar with They will say it's haram. And that window is there. The federal government had a policy and legislation to do that. All we need is operationalizing it and then blowing it to scale. Yeah. Number five or number six are women. In the North, we must have definite productive role for our highly energetic mm. Mm. highly intelligent mm. Mm. and mm. productive women mm. we have a population where almost half of it they have a lot of time sitting at home doing of course the resources of keeping families and building our homes yes mm. we thank our women for that mm. but the north they they must to have a clearly set up policy for our women to contribute we have seen what women do in other Muslim dominated places mm -hmm. in Indonesia mm -hmm. and Malaysia. Mm -hmm. And we mm -hmm. must find a way for our women. Indonesia, to Malaysia, they are perfect yeah. examples yeah. Yeah. Yes. of human life, education, yeah. health, mm -hmm. economics, and the rest. And of course, uh, uh, those, those, this, 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 these are the things. If the North can get this right, if our Governor's Forum of the United States can, can really get this right, honestly, the North will be. Will, will, I think, will, uh, will uh, be Doctor, be, I think Honorable has uh, taken us to the, the zenith of this conversation. Yes, yes, I mean, yes. as a way out. Yeah. First, do you see sufficient awareness of uh, appreciation of the, the, the urgency to take on 
this radical departure from the past as outlined by the uh, by, by honorable for me it's content it's radical it's strategic but do you see the governors do you see the entire Good. leadership strata Good. of the north Good. keen into this kind of thinking still going back to my own discussion i must appreciate the honorable for listing out those areas they're quite that strategic are quite, they're quite strategic, strategic mm -hmm. but has we have we really sit down to look at the concept that he is bringing, whether the governors have the same concept in mind. And uh, when, we, when, we, when we look at it critically, and we look at the issue that he is uh, uh, outlined, uh, outlining yeah. and also conversing for the review of the Nigerian constitution, or abandoning the system completely to come to reality, mm. African, mm. Uh, like what Gaddafi mm. used to mm. call an mm. African democracy. Mm. Let's develop our own democracy that will That's fit right. us, that will suit us, That's isn't right. it? But I, I, I also look at it, you see that um, these governors, you cannot be able to say they are really sincere in their own approach and actions. Mm -hmm. uh, only we, we, the government is trying, the, the, the central government, which is being accused, is trying to liberalize the local governments. And, and the governors were the two governors yes. refuse their national all state assembly governors. To, and all governor, northern governors have refused to endorse that aspect of amendment whereby the local government will have their own independence. So what kind of sincerity are we talking about? And what kind of development do we want to see us doing or coming up with in terms of women liberalization, mm -hmm. in terms of economic empowerment, mm -hmm. and then the Almajiri system which largely come from the local governments, and then other development like I mentioned healthcare issues, the, the basic education, all centered in the local governments. The governor's supposed to really look at that aspect and say, okay, yes, let's give it a trial and say, okay, we have done one aspect of the review of the Nigerian constitution by liberalizing and giving the powers to the, the local government. Then we move to another thing because it will be very difficult for us to abandon this constitution that we are talking about <laughs> be, because America will not allow you since you have already, they have already pocketed you, pocketed you into their own pocket <laughs> and they know what they are doing. <laughs> Neocolonialism, remember, <laughs> neocolonialism is the in thing now. That is uh, we, are, we are having flag yeah. independence. That is it. It's only flag independence that we have. Mm -hmm. But the real independence is still, they are still controlling. Look at the way they are passing uh, uh, orders. They are saying that Nigeria, what trends do we have that you say that you are advising, you are advising your, editor, your citizens not to go to some states? Mm -hmm. For God's sake, without liaison with, with the central government. government. Yeah. So these are the things. These are the things that we and they, they went ahead and issued that statement without considering a government, independent government, a, sovereignty of the nation. You, you see, so that, that is the issue. So the it's issue ridiculous. now is let us use the constitution that we have and then enhance the development mm. of our mm. people. Mm. We can still do it. Extract as we can much still do value it. from exactly. the constitution the way it is. Exactly. It completely be exactly. visited and overhauled. So now there are, these are two things. Where, is it to extract? Excuse me, gentlemen. Is it to extract what we can? Uh, honourable. Is it is it to extract what we can to make work for us, or to for abandon now. it? For now, we, the National Assembly is there, and they have the powers by this same constitution, no, 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 legal no, 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 to really several you know, times, honorable, even during your honorable, ninth, honorable, 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 even during your ninth. Let me, let me, excuse me, me honourable. Mm. During your ninth assembly there was an attempt also to review the constitution. Exactly. The fundamental elements that were up for review were all rejected. Of course, rejected. not all, not all. Fundamental. Well, let me tell you, I, I'm a member of the Ninth Assembly and I will defend the Ninth Assembly in that area because Ninth Assembly was this assembly that had the largest number of amendments of the constitution, 16 items. If, if, if for one of time I'd have listed them all there, some were rejected, one of them, of course, are totally wrong. But let me some of, most of those were peripheral issues. Issue. Yes, the woman was also rejected. Yes, yes. there were peripheral there, issues. There, there was misunderstanding about that, and I spoke similarly on different fora on mm. that. And then they are also going to revisit it. And the issue of traditional rulers. Mm. rulers mm. Because mm. But let me say something now that some some of you might not agree with. The issue of autonomy of law government is not the fault of governors. It's the fault of the Nigerian constitution. Okay. The Nigerian constitution deliberately. And the governors are taking government. away, are taking let, advantage let of that the, flaw. The, 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 the Nigerian constitution 1999 that's amended deliberately threw away the, 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 the local government to the dustbin and to the symmetry. 
Let me tell you, in the Nigerian constitution, section 7 clearly said the local government, there shall be demo, the, the, the existence of democratically elected local government system is hereby guaranteed. But their function, their finances, mm. and their administration and, 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 and structure are to be done by the state through the state assembly. Mm. What does that mean? It's given with the right hand and collected with the left hand. Can that be changed? Isn't that, that the, is, the is, same right constitution right makes provisions for so, yes, so, this? So is so that's the that was I'm, I'm saying that so the constitution so also so makes provision for amendments, and human beings will do the amendments. So now I'm saying the national assembly, the area, the only area that was that was amended, that was to be amended, is on the issue of finances. Now, in section 162 of the constitution, it clearly said there shall be a joint account mm. to be managed by the states. Mm. That is, that, as far as I'm that's robbery mm. against the local government. Yes. What, who put that in the constitution? When, of course, in section 160, 161, and 162 clearly said the monies that belong to the federal government belong to the federal government. The monies that, that comes to the states belong to the state. Mm. But for the local government, it you know, should be managed by the state. Now, the worst part of it, is in the first schedule on the functions of the local government. Go and check what the constitution said. That the functions of the local government are to be determined by the local you know, state assembly. By the local assembly. Particularly, they said they are also only to recommend. Only to recommend and also to advise. Mm. The local governments are to recommend and to make proposals to mm. an institution of state. And then they are to manage symmetries. <laughs> be real grounds. Local governments are to only lessen wheelbarrows <laughs> and they are to lessen bicycles mm. and cats mm. in bracket, cats that are mm. mechanically propelled. Mm. I'm telling you, yeah, the motor architects, mm. the crafters of the Nigerian constitution in 1999, as amended, are the ones that killed the local government, not governors. And now, because of that joint account, because I said in this one I will defend the governors. In this one, now, the joint account, all the governors, if you are a sitting governor today, your predecessors used the joint account to build infrastructure in your state mm. with an ISPO, you know, for those projects. Everybody will, uh, everybody will yeah, pay on the on the mm. account. Mm. Now, if you just go and cut that account, you do with the states having this. You create a legal account, problem. The, the state account will go into negative. That's it. You can't even run the government. And those monies that have been taken as loans by your predecessors, you are now the state governor, all the blame will be on you. There has to be a way out. This How do you wriggle out of, uh, 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 wriggle out of all of this booby trash? This is exactly intervention. There should be special intervention and instruction of those loans by the state themselves and the federal government. Those states that have had loans and huge debts on the joint account who sit down with those financial institutions, negotiate or structure those loans according to the laws of the land and, and, and other amended regulations with the federal government and the state government and spread out payments. And now then you have your separate independent account and local governments should also have that independent account. How long will that, that, like, like, that likely that, to take? Well, we hope the state assembly will do it and then of course... Independent of... And, and other independent this is exactly what we say here. Hmm. Um, in and the and last um, during the last exercise of the amendment uh, exercise, we participated fully uh, at uh, regional level and the national level so much. In fact, it uh, some of the recommendations to do with the reforms in judiciary, we submitted that. I made me myself personally a uh, submission on that mm. in Kaduna, the one for the Northwest, mm. and I also mm. made another presentation here in Abuja, also mm. Mm. another city. But the issue is, um, like what Honorable said, I agree with you, fine, good. But if we really were to be honest as politicians coming to serve our people, and agreeing that, of course, issue to do with governance or issue to do with leadership is about service. Mm. It's not about mm. self enrichment. Mm. It's not about serving my personal. Then those that are just being sworn in, that just came on board, if they can really be delivered and decide to change the system by allowing the system to go or to run. They can make a proposal like what he said. Make a proposal. The federal government can come in if they are also serious. Let's see how we can, what, how can we take the burden that is actually existing now, the burden of issues to do with the debt, issues to do with uh, overdraft collected by the state and the rest of that. Yeah. How do we settle that so that at least the marriage between the state and local government could be officially dissolved? 
<laughs> okay. Yes. So if we could do so, yes, yeah. if if we could do that, then we will be serious enough mm. to at least adhere to the principles of the uh, uh, federalism. Because mm. the problem now is we are not practicing true federalism. federalism. We are not practicing parliamentary mm. system. Mm. We don't know even the system we are practicing. There. Because mm. local government are part and parcel of the federal system. Exactly. They are a federating unit, mm. and they should be independent, and they should be given some 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 level of independence autonomy mm -hmm. and also some right to exercise on their own. Okay. But the problem is they've been all the time separation. Yes. Yes. Um, let's let's mm -hmm. take two quick issues as we round on them and round off this conversation. Two critical issues. Mm -hmm. The North has the widest spread of ungoverned spaces. You were in the House Committee uh, and um, it's a major security issue. Uh, elements walking the streets of the North willingly, wantonly, whimsically carry arms and snuffing life out of people. Ungoverned spaces in the north. Yeah. Can we get over this? That's number one. We cannot deny that the monolithic north is gone and probably gone for good. Do you see the possibility of collective action in the north? When the north was monolithic, like the Ariwa mentality, the, <laughs> the Gamji concept, um, Ideas were, were roundly discussed, there was consensus and commonly implemented across the north. That has been broken. Can there be, I'm not saying a resuscitation of that kind of consciousness. Mm -hmm. Do you see the possibility of collective action in the north to drive development, take it away from this current state of underdevelopment? No, actually this is one, I think I was, I was talking about it earlier before you, uh, you caught me. Uh, we are trying to change the narrative even within the civil society constituency that we will have to make a realignment we will have to make some alignment alignment in the sense that civil society should no longer be uh, sitting in just only one constituency where we allow also the state actors to be sitting on yeah, other, other constituency mm -hmm. it's not going to work mm -hmm. the issue of the time of criticism the issue of contamination, the issue of antagonism, the issue of this and that are all gone. Mm. We have to accept ourselves that we are partners in progress. Yeah. Therefore, civil society should begin to now see how they can mend the relationship with the state actors so that we find ourselves on one table we'll be talking. The issue or the major problem with these political actors is that as soon as they get into power, they became deaf and Ooh, dumb yeah. and blind. Yes. That is a problem. I think mm. Honorable Kushia yes. maybe some experience. <laughs> yes, at times. <laughs> Too much power. <laughs> yeah. So most at times they don't. Most at times they don't come across people that would tell them the truth. They would never come across that. The only people they come across with and they are all the time in friendship with are only Saika Fan and say and and he yeah. Those who do not even ID have an ID to share with. So this time around we are trying to change the narrative and we are trying well, to see how. We can create this synergy with the state actors, especially the National Assembly. Now we are trying to see how we can do that, so that we, at the civil society from the northern part of the country, we can create a synergy. We can create an interactive platform, so that we'll be discussing and we'll be relating with them and be reminding them about their own responsibilities. Okay. On yes. governed spaces, on governed spaces, spaces because it's critical to development. On governed spaces, that's for the political bureaucracy, but for the traditional institution, there is no on governed space, hmm. and that's why we are still pushing for. Constitutional law for traditional leaders. I've seen traditional leaders who know every inch of their land, mm. every new birth, every livestock, yes. mm. every mm. death. Mm. They know mm. it. Mm. But of course, you know, the, the degeneration mm. of the government system and their removal. Remember, the, the role of traditional leaders in the constitution is there even in the 1979 constitution. Yeah. It was expunged in the 1999 constitution. Yes. I yes. Didn't know, we don't know yes. just who did that. <laughs> so, Governance is not to be led for politicians alone, and that's what comrade right. Yeah. right yes. Yes. Every mm -hmm. stakeholder, civil mm -hmm. society groups, businessmen, mm -hmm. traditional leaders, mm -hmm. leaders groups, mm -hmm. women groups, yes. we all have to come up okay. and, and, and uh, Doctor, let me get your takeaway on, on this matter. Yes. I mean, I not think, squaring up to its challenges. Yeah, I think um, I quite agree with the honorable and mm. Uh, and the ambassador and the issue of ungoverned spaces in the north. Mm -hmm. uh, definitely, there are some gaps in the north where it comes to, especially the issue of traditional rulers mm -hmm. play a 
very prominent Kiyo. critical role. Mm. Um, initially, when we were young, we know that uh, if anybody comes to our own area, who should be noted, and then you should go and tell the Meongwa, and Meongwa mm. will go mm. and tell. Right, that that until it gets to the knowledge of those the who are supposed to know. And then uh, you should be able to also know the kind of trade this person is, mm. what brought him to that area. Mm. But today, you just wake up and see people, and nothing will happen, and the next thing is that they will see that they, 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 they run into some houses. So the best thing is to really uh, go back to the basis, and then get to our own level of really making sure that um, we need everything in the board before it gets to anything and the involvement of all other stakeholders. Well, well, thank governance. you very much gentlemen. Uh, it's been quite insightful uh, hard, uh, conversation on the state of the north and uh, whether or not uh, the, the elements will come together to knock down on the development in the north and scale up a development. I've had in the studio with me Dr. Abbas Garba Idris, uh, he's a development and uh, political economist, um, uh, very strong and emergency response, and having served as the pioneer director general of the FCT um, emergency, uh, emergency management uh, agency. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Thank you very much. Pleasure having you on the program. I've also had in the studio with me uh, executive director of the Citizen for Education and Development and chairman of the Conference of uh, Northern States Civil Society Network, uh, Ambassador Ibrahim Waya. Thank you very much. Thank Steve. you very much. And uh, Honourable joined us in the course of this conversation and um, punched a lot of holes in our conversation. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, he part of it. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's still part of it. He's still part added of it. a lot of zest to the conversation. <laughs> we appreciate your contribution and inter intervention in the conversation. Uh, Honourable Balarabe Kakale uh, was a member of the, the Ninth Assembly uh, and served actively uh, in the basic education, the army, uh, anti-drug abuse, uh, appropriation and health. Thank you very much. Thank you. And thank you very much for being with us on Democracy in Practice. We'll be back again discussing other emerging issues within the Nigerian democratic space. Most importantly, to deepen democracy, advance development in the country. Thanks for being with us. Democracy in Practice.